Good morning, this is Debbie from CarryAdCards.co and today I'm going to show you how I made this card. Um, hopefully you can see there's a quilting effect that I've produced on the background. Very, very easy technique to do, but it just adds something a little bit different to many cards that you see. So, as ever, I use a six by six inch card blank that I just buy in a pack. I've got pink pirouette card here and I cut that to 14 centimeters by 14 centimeters and I always forget the imperial measurements for that. Oh goodness me I've got the metric side here let's just turn that over. I just turned it over as this side was a little bit grubby but Never mind. Okay, six and a no five and a half inches by five and a half inches, and a piece of whisper white card, thirteen point five centimeters by thirteen point five centimeters, or five and a quarter inches by five and a quarter inches. I will put all of the measurements on my blog, so don't worry. So put that aside for now because we don't need that until nearly at the end. So we're going to start off by doing all of these little bits and then I'll finish off by doing the quilting. To make the banners, I've used Stamping Up's Banner Framelits dies and they come in a set with all of the different sizes which makes it very easy to create banners and I'm pretty sure those are the sizes that I use. That, and that's the one and that one. Oops, should have left them out, shouldn't I? And then I got a piece of pink pirouette card, cut the larger one out, run it through the die cutting machine, and then, oh my goodness, I'm struggling to pick things up this morning. So that's what I ended up with. And then a piece of whisper white card that I cut the next one out with, and I ended up with that. So then, if you can see on here, I've put two embossed lines just on the white card. And for any of you that regularly watch my videos, you'll know that I'm always using my Simply Scored board. And here it is. So I'll bring that in. All I did was turn it the wrong way. When you, when you cut things, you tend to end up with a right and a wrong way, just a slightly neater edge. So turn it so that the right side is facing down. Pop it into the top left hand corner so it fits snugly. Use your simply um, scored embossing stylus that comes with your board. There's the edge groove. Well, I don't want to emboss onto that. So I'm just going to go one in and just score down. And then I did two lines, so I just went one in again and scored down. Now I tend to struggle at the very edge here, but I can't turn it round because of the point, so I can't line it up, so I will just have to manage. Um, so again, not right at the edge, the first notch in, the first eighth of an inch, and the second notch in. There you go. And you've got your two emboss lines. I do need this again in a minute, but I'll just pop it out of the way for now. So I'm going to just put those together using some dimensionals. So I'll start building pieces of the card as I go along. Now, when I lay that over, it's all perfect angle sizes. Here I've covered the top edge, you can't see it, but if the top edge was showing then you might want to just cut along there so that um, both of them start at the same place or you may want it so that you've got the layered effect like that. Personal preference. So just pop a couple of dimensionals on and then I can put this aside to pick up when I'm assembling the card. 
I've got the builders in again today. We've nearly finished. We started renovating the kitchen. Well, where are we? First week of September. It was supposed to be a five week job, but it's become one of those jobs where if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. And um, we're nearly at the end of November and we still haven't finished yet. <laughs> we're not physically doing the work, we're having tradesmen in. But um, it's been a bit of a nightmare, but we're nearly there now. But if you can hear banging and things moving around, that's what the noise is. Right, anyway, that aside, so we've done the banner bit, we're going to do this bit now. And for that, we're going to use the Framelits label collection from Stamping Up. And that's the one that I use for the pink layer, and that's the one for the Whisper White. So I'll pop those on one side. So I took a piece of pink pirouette card, laid that on, ran it through the die cutting machine, and there we ended up with beautifully cut label that we can use for layering up with the white. Put that on one side for a moment because I've got another stage to do before I get to here. Now you can see that I've stamped onto here and for that I've used the Apothecary Art Set. Beautiful, beautiful set. Um, makes absolutely stunning cards. You've got this lovely rose garland or wreath effect there and then you've got a slightly more open one here and one that you can write on. That's the stamp that I'm going to use to create that and I've just popped it on my acrylic pad. Now I'm going to be colouring this in. I've just used pencils, I've just used Spectrum Noir pencils to do this. If you're going to use blenders or um, alcohol pens then you really need to be using something like Memento ink uh, because otherwise you run the risk of the ink bleeding. I've just used pencils as I say so it doesn't actually matter too much for me. I can use standard black ink but I will use the Memento ink. Now I've got a feeling this ink pad is almost on its way out so I may struggle to get a clear stamped image. I'll do my best. And as you know, if you watch my videos, I usually stamp onto a foam pad with a bit of paper just to keep the pad nice and clean. I've somehow, oh goodness me, I've managed to get black ink on my fingers and transfer it to the paper. Luckily, this is just a demo stamp, so it doesn't really matter, but I'll have to watch I don't get it onto the card. I'm such a mucky pup. And there you go, yeah, I think the ink is on its way out. I'll have to get another pad out for next time. Right, so when I've got that, before I die cut it, I would have coloured that in. I'm not going to sit here and colour it in. You all know how to colour. Um, but I've just coloured it in using various shades of pink, just to make it look a bit more like a bouquet, and two shades of an olivey green. So I've coloured that in, and then I've die cut it. So I've used the die, the framelit from the uh, labels collection and then die cut it and ended up with that. So I'm going to put this together. I'm just assembling all the different parts of the card so that when we come to put it together it will be fairly fast. I do quite like a bit of dimension on this. It just gives it that extra bit of added interest. Right. Okay, and then just lay that on. It's difficult for me to see if I'm actually in the right place because I'm sitting a bit further back. There we go. Okay. And for this, I have found, even if I use my stamp and my jig, it doesn't matter how careful I am, I struggle, just personally, um, I'm sure other people don't, but I struggle to get the greeting absolutely spot on in they're perfectly straight, perfectly level. I just seem to bodge it a little bit. So the trick I use, and 
I have seen quite a lot of other people doing the same with this set, is I just stamp a greeting onto a um, piece of paper and many people just cut it out so you've got a plain rectangle but I've just used that frame it from the Bitty Banners set just to give it again a bit of extra interest. So I'll pop a couple of dimensions onto there and put that in there. Lovely. So that's the second part. So we've now got our banners and we've got the main central piece of the card. So the last thing we're going to do then is create this lovely quilted diagonal effect, which is so easy. So to do that, I bring in my um, Simply Score tool again, and there is what's called a diagonal scoring plate because these lines all go vertically. And to get the quilting effect, I need to use the diagonal scoring plate. This is um, an add on that you can buy. If you have a look at the back, you'll see there's an arrow. And there's also little pads here which help hold it stable while it's on there. So the arrow must be facing the top. Turn it over and it just fits in there lovely and neatly. Take your white card, again put the correct side, the side that's going to be facing you on the front of the card down, so you've got your wrong side here. Pop it up into the corner, use your stylus and what I did was look for two inch markers. So I started at four inches and just scored across, two inches, scored across, and then right into the corner, which would be zero inches, scored across, and then coming down here, gosh, I am quite far back, I really can't see if I'm in the correct place, two inches, and then four inches, I think that's right. It's strange when you're sitting behind, um, normally I tend to stand up, to do things like this. Right, sorry, chattering away. That's been scored diagonally, so I turn the card 90 degrees and do exactly the same thing again. So four inches, two inches, and if you want smaller squares, just do it at one inch or one and a half inches. Entirely up to you how big your quilting effect is. I didn't want it to be too busy. For this card so I've just gone at two inch marks oops and it's that simple how easy was that and then you've got this beautiful quilted pattern right, I'll move this out to the way and we can start to put the card together so take the card blank as you know I'm a real glue aficionado but you can Attach your card in any way that you like. You can use snail, you can use double-sided tape, you can use glue. Any method that you find works for you. I do quite like just having a little bit of manoeuvrability. I don't have that kind of eye where I can put things on perfect the first time. I've got a friend who makes cards and she just always just gets it on absolutely dead straight, dead level, doesn't matter how many layers she puts on, they just look perfect, but I can't seem to do that, I seem to put everything squiffy. Okay, and a bit of glue around the outside here, trying not to get it on the paper below, you don't need much in the centre if any really, as long as the edges are well adhered because if you think about it with double sided tape you only put them around the edges don't you oh you see now I've talked about cards being squiffy <laughs> it looks like it to me okay so the next thing I'm going to do is put the banner on so you can see we've got this lovely quilted effect going on there in fact that would be lovely with just a pretty salutation and a simple flower on but I might have a go at making something like that so I didn't want too much dimension because I have got quite a lot. So I've got dimension there and dimension there. So I just pop that on flat. Bit of glue on there, wonderful glue. And what I was looking for here was getting it so it was near the bottom because I'm going to cover the top edge and I want the banner 
fairly near to the bottom. So I'm using as much of the card as possible. I think that's fairly straight. Okay. And then this, I can't obviously can't glue this because I've got dimension here. So I need to put some dimensionals to hold this up, but this bit, because this has already been raised, I need to put an extra couple of dimensions here to give it that extra height so it's going to sit flat, otherwise it's going to sit at a slight angle. So I'm just going to put one here, I tend to just test this out. Now I know that bit hasn't been supported, or that bit, so I'm going to put, oh they're all coming off, a lot at a time, put one there, one there, and one there. Leave that one there for now, just take off the backing from these three and just pop another one on and that helps you get the extra height when you've raised something up that's on something that's already raised. Because you see this one underneath sort of counteracts the one that's there. It does work believe me. Okay, pop that on. There you see. Now that's helped. So we've got dimension there, but that's helped support it there. Right now, the only other thing we've got to do is just pop some pearls on just to give it that quilted look. And I've got, I think these are three millimetre pearls. They look like they're three millimetre pearls. You could use diamantes if you want. Oops, that one's got a life of its own. And I'm all fingers and thumbs today, so I just tend to pick mine up on my crafting knife. Um, everybody's got their own way, but I find I can just slice them off, picks up the glue that comes with them, and generally they stick to the crafting knife, but sometimes they do do a little bit of a flick like it did earlier. But generally it's quite controlled. Right, where are we going? Let's go there. And of course if you'd done diagonals at one inch or one and a half inch then you'd have a lot more pearls on it because you'd have more crisscrosses wouldn't you? Okay nearly there. I think just one more in there. I can't see any more. And that's it. You see how simple that was. Yes there's a lot of stages to it but none of them are difficult and I think that looks like a really stunning card. I would love to receive that. Well, thank you very much for watching my video and I'll see you again tomorrow. So it's goodbye from Debbie at carryadcards.co.